So welcome back to part three of our course play tutorial series. Now you can see we have finished harvesting our wheat and we have a straw swath down. Went ahead and also finished the cultivation and seeding with course play. And I wanted to demonstrate why it can be so convenient in having multiple tools uh, with the same working width. Remember in the last part of the series, we basically recorded a course uh, using, let's close that, basically recorded the Field 25 3 meter course uh, to cultivate. Our cedar here is also 3 meters, so we can just do the exact same course. The way to load the course up is we'll go to the globe, we'll pick the course by clicking on this folder icon to load it up, and there we go. Now. One thing to note is, let's say we wish to also um, seed field 26. Okay, we've already seeded field 26, but let's pretend we want to seed field 26 also. Okay, we can just go here and we can click the plus folder to append another course to the end of the first course. So what would happen here is... Cedar would seed this field. When this field was done, it would turn around, hopefully not run into any trees, drive over here to this field, and start seeding this field. All in one action. We wouldn't have to tell it to go do that. We can just append multiple courses, assuming that the um, tractor isn't going to run himself into trouble. Okay. But what we want to do is we want to clear that. So we're going to hit the X here. Clear all the courses out. We have field 25, 3 meters. And we are in seed and fertilizer mode. We're going to change this to nearest uh, first waypoint. I don't want to confuse those two waypoints. And we're going to say drive course. Jump out. And there he goes. While he's off seeding. Let's show you what course play can do that the average hired helper has no capability of doing. That is, we're going to use course play to bale this straw. Remember, field 25 4 meter harvest was the course we used to harvest our straw. We're going to use that exact same course, the exact same 4 meter width. We're going to go into field work mode. First waypoint. Drive course. Now watch what happens. We are now bailing straw. You might say to yourself, well, is this guy going to stop when um, when the bale's full? And indeed he will. Pretty cool. Just going to go ahead and kind of jump to the point right before this guy goes and unloads the bale of straw just to show you that and then we're going to jump up to field nine where we've got some grass i'm going to show you how we can use course play to O, ted windrow and bale a field of grass all by itself So, if course play did have a fault, it is that sometimes the turns are slow. I'll show you how you can kind of rectify that situation a little bit. If we go here to the gauge speed limits, we have turn speed of six miles per hour. We could bump that up to let's say eight. Reversing speed is three. We could probably bump that up to five if we wanted to. Oh, look, there we're unloading a bale. Now, he can get into trouble. He can definitely get himself into trouble just like he did there. So, that is something to be aware of. These guys do not, do have some faults. If that happens, very easy. We just hit stop driver. Okay. Let's see if we can get ourselves unstuck here.
you're going to use course play, you're going to be very adept at fixing fixing AI drivers' mistakes. They're not faultless. So this time around, we don't want to start at the first waypoint. Okay, we want to change this to start at the nearest waypoint is what I like to pick. And at this point, I'm going to pick the little course so I can make sure that I'm close to one. And I'm also going to do... Uh, where is it? Drive course. I'm going to do turn on field. I'm going to deactivate that. Okay. And we're going to stop the driver again because I don't really know where he thinks he's going. Here's the waypoint. There we go. So I deactivated turn on field, which means it will turn off the field. Okay. So if turn on field is enabled, the course play driver will try to stay within the bounds of the field when he's making his turns. Uh, like the driver up there at the top, okay? He's trying to stay within the bounds of the field as best he can to make his turns. But what we've done here is we've turned turn on field off. So now the driver is going to actively go outside the field, make his turn, and come back into the field. It's fine if you have lots of area around the field. Uh, right here where we have this hillside, it might cause a little bit of problems take a look the part of designing the course and planning the course is looking at your surroundings and kind of getting a feel for how things look all right so we're gonna let this guy just do his little thing and we're gonna come back to both of those later here we are we've got a case Puma and we are going to Set this guy off, mowing the field, after we take a look at some more advanced horse recording information. So we have looked at, we're going to go to field work, horse generation. We've looked at the advanced course generator before. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pick field 9, and we're just going to, we need to increase our working width. So let's unfold our mowers let's check working with 8.4 meters again I'm gonna actually reduce this down to 8 meters just so there's a little bit of an overlap that's gonna help us we're at 8 meters so we can generate a course and see how it wants to do it it wants to go this way okay well I want to try so I want to show you something this is why the advanced course generator is so cool I can go in here right now and I can say you know what I want to do a headland around the field I want to make three passes around the field in a counterclockwise direction I want to mow on the headland passes first I can do generate course and now you can see the course that it's going to take. I can say, well, let's try two and see what that looks like. Oh, that looks interesting. We can try one. Okay, and we can change direction. We can change the turns a little bit. Basically, see how things map out. Okay, and if we can go headland passes, we're going to go up and down rows. See, we start on our up and down rows. Now we start way over here, and we finish on our outside row. Okay? But what we're going to do is we own, take a look at that, we own all of this land. And the field only covers a portion of that. Why do I want to leave all of that great grass unused? Okay? Because if we look here at our eyeball, look, that is the field. 
way over there. What about all this grass over here? I could use that. So what we're going to do is we're going to record our own course to basically redefine this field. Okay? Pretty cool what we can do here. So I'm going to line up the tractor. And I'm going to hit start recording course. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drive. I'm going to leave a little bit of gap between this and the horse and the field. Side me just in case, you know, I don't know where the old boundary lines are. Slow down. We're going to make a turn. And we're going to go down this way. And we're going to continue on up. Turn here. Look at all this grass we're now going to be able to make use of. Turn here at the road. Drive on up this way. Okay, and then we're going to slow down, and we're going to stop. Okay, and we're going to save this. We're going to call this Field 9 Modified. Okay. Now, if we go here... going to pick currently loaded course okay which is now the one we just did field 9 modified and we're going to do two headland passes we're going to go counterclockwise headland passes first and we're going to generate a course and now we have generated our course outside of the normal field boundaries we're making much better use of the available grass. Okay, so we're going to then save this course as field 9 a mod modified, and then we're going to do that. This is a 8 meter mower. Okay. We are going to then we're going to do nearest waypoint, and well, I can just show you what was going to happen here. We're going to do first waypoint. We're going to back this guy up a bit. And we're going to say drive course. And there we go. He's going to go off and mow. All right. I'm going to pause here. I'm going to go take care of these other tractors that we had doing something. And then I'll come back. We'll see this guy has done some mowing while we're gone. All right, we're back down here at the main farm. You can see that we have managed to get a whole four bales, almost five bales, out of that little grass field. So what we're going to do is we're going to drive this up to the um, our wheat field. We're going to uh, drive this up to the shop. We don't need follow me when we have course play. Because we can just record courses, and I'm going to show you this in another video later on. But I've just made a few transport courses. We have farm to shop. I want to pick that. I'm going to do transport mode. And we're going to do nearest, court, nearest waypoint and go on and head on off. Okay. Now he's going to go and drive back to the shop, which is fine. Because I've also recorded a course from the shop up here. The field nine because I didn't feel like driving up here three different times. So I drove up here once with the Puma and I saved the course. And then I used that course to drive the Massey Ferguson up here and to drive the Magnum up here. I did not in any way drive these three things up here by myself. You can see that we have made one headland pass. 
Our tractor is now making its second headland pass. I'm going to jump in here, and we're just going to ride along with the mower for a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of time lapse, speed up, and I'll be right back with you in just a few minutes. All right, let's go ahead and figure out what on earth this guy's doing. So we're gonna pull up the, up. Oh, he's just sitting there thinking, I guess. There he goes. So he was just thinking, I suppose. Now he's gonna be making his up and down passes. So what we saw, I didn't touch him. All right, let's run back over here. Well, it's not. So you can see what I did is I stopped this guy after he got up here to the store. I don't really know why he drove into the uh, retaining wall. At any rate, I then set him off on the store to field nine course, which I had recorded earlier. And he is just about made his way up here. So I did not have to drive him up there. I was able to concentrate on other things. Like I said, if you set these courses up right uh, the first time, you don't have to do things more than once typically. And it really turns the game into more of a farm management game. Let's go ahead and jump on in here and let's stop him off. Now we've got everything up here that we need in order to continue doing our grass work. So I'm going to go ahead and grab our tether. And I'm going to bring up course play. I'm going to pick our courses and I'm going to fix pick field nine modified I'm going to load that course I'm going to go to field work mode so then I have course generation I'm going to pick that I'm going to do one headland counterclockwise generate the course okay so what I'm going to do is we're going to wait a little bit for this mower to get a little bit further ahead. And then we're going to basically send this guy off to Ted the field for us. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Field 9 mod um, 8.7 meter Ted. Okay. Just so we know what's going on. I'm going to cut, and I'll be right back once this mower has caught up, done a little bit more work. So the mower has done another up and down pass. I think it's far enough ahead that we can go ahead and send this guy off. Now, one thing that we could do if we wanted to make sure that he didn't overtake the mower, we could come in here and we could lower his speed, field working speed to, let's say, 10 miles an hour. Let's take a look at the shop. And just see what the mower's working speed is. It's 13 miles an hour. And let's see what the tether's working speed is. 11 miles per hour. So, okay, we can go back. We can bump this to 14. It will only go 11 miles per hour. That is fine. Go to the first waypoint. And start him off. So you can see he's going to unfold going to make one pass around tedding the grass 
And then he's going to start making up and down passes. Let's take a look at a rake now. So a rake, we're going to do it one more. We're going to pick our field nine modified. We're going to load that course. We're going to go to field work mode. And we're going to go to course generation. We're going to do our magical GUI interface so we can see what's going on. And on this one, I want to make one headland pass. I want to go counterclockwise, but this time I want to go on the up and downs first. Okay? Force generation. See, this one wants to start way over here. We're going to make up and down passes with our rake till we get to um, one of these. And then we're going to do a headland around, and then we're going to stop. Working width of 7.8 meters. Let's just check in the shop and see if that is correct. 8.5 meters. So that is identifying the working width incorrectly. Let's go back in here and let's adjust this up to 8. Point. Let's make it 8.0 just for good measure. Generate the course. All right, let's see here. Cancel that course. Let's do this all over again. Field 9 modified. Let's load that up. Go here. One headland around. 8 meters. We're going to do up and down rows first. Generator course. There it is. Okay, now let's try this. Let's go. Let's go two headland passes. Generate, couldn't generate. Let's move the tractor down to where it wants to start. Then we'll see if we have a better job. So clearly, you're not going to be able to have a hired helper do all of this, especially since we have now expanded the, the field here. All right, now that we are closer, starting point, let's do this. Cancel it. Let's do it one more time. See how it looks. Force generation, two headland passes. All right. That looks pretty good. Now, look, it wants to start over here now. <laughs> We're going to do two headland passes. This is where it's going to want to start. So we are going to... Just park this over here for now. We're going to save this course. We're going to call it Field 9 Modified with an 8 meter um, rake. Okay. Let's go figure out what this tether is doing. Okay. Sure what he was doing just sitting there. Cuz he's going to start making up and down passes over here. Let's see. Sure he does his job. Now, tedding that, and he'll be making his up and down passes. 
So since we set up the course the way we set it up, we're going to need to wait for the tether here to finish the whole field before we start our windrow. We could set it up a different way um, and basically have it follow the tether. Uh, I'm concerned if we do that, that the baler is going to run into bales as it's doing its up and downs uh, because it would be starting on the headlands first. So what I want to do is I want to try to avoid that by having it do the up and downs first and then do the headland last. Because the trick that we're going to do is we're going to send the baler on the same course as the wind rower. Just like we sent the baler off on the same course as the harvester in the other field where we were harvesting straw, we're going to send the baler on the same course as the rake. That way it follows in the same path as the rake and it will pick up the wind road hay. Okay? So what I'm going to do is, once again, cut. When we come back, we'll have a fully tetted field. We'll set off the wind rower. We'll set off the baler right behind it because the baler will be running slower than the wind rower. And basically, we'll just let it happen and we'll come back to a fully baled field of hay using course play as the, uh, the vehicle for the work. All right, so our tether just finished the course. Go ahead and go in here, right click. We're going to go to course play control, stop driver, exit out of the course, and we're going to move this guy off out of the way. Now, and we'll get into our rake. We've already set the course up. We're going to go ahead and line this guy up and start first waypoint. Let's just send him pull up, open up the rake, drop it down, and get to business. Things didn't do a super hot job over here, but I think that's just because the elevation changes. And we're going to do, we're going to change this to turn on field deactivated. Then I'll make these turns a lot easier. Let's go ahead and sky out. I'm lined up for the second pass. Nearest waypoint. Go. Turn on field is deactivated. That's what we want. So we're just going to ride along with this guy just for a little bit. See, he's going at 11 miles per hour. I want him to get a few headlands up here, or a few passes up, and then we're going to bring out our baler and get our baler started. The exact same course that this guy's running. And basically, we will then, you know, the video is kind of running a little long. I was going to uh, have him go ahead and work the whole field, but, you know, I think once we get started, you'll kind of understand the whole principle of the fact. In fact, you probably already understand the principle of the fact. It's just mere academics now in, um, what are you doing? Mere academics now in having this guy basically execute what you know is probably already going to work. Go. So, He's really enjoying working on this diagonal. We're doing a lot better once we get up there on the more of the straight stretches. Go to our courses, and we're going to do nine field nine modified eight meter rake. 
I loaded that course. First waypoint. And let's see, what does the baler run at? I I don't remember. This baler runs at 12 miles per hour. The rake was running at a speed slower than that, so I'm going to set this to run at 8 miles per hour. Okay. I'm going to go to field work mode. We were in transport mode. Somewhat lined up. Start him off. And there we go. Let me see here. Turn on field deactivated. Okay. And we'll just ride along with this guy for a little bit. Get rid of our lines just because they're kind of annoying. Let's see what he's doing is he is going to be running same path as our rake is. Allowing it to pick up the grass windrow. And since he's doing the up and down passes, he should be okay and out of the way of the rake. Might not be the case for this bale here or a couple other bales. But, you know, it's all a, a, a matter of experimentation. You may find one course works a little bit better than the other course over the period of, of playing with it. And that's where the advanced course generation really comes in handy, in my opinion. Jump out just to prove I am not driving this thing. And as I said before, I challenge you to have a hired helper do this. I don't think it's going to work. Don't think it's going to work out for you so hot. Since he's running at 8 miles per hour. And our rake here is running at a faster speed. Rake will always be ahead of the baler. Won't have any problem with these two guys interfering with, with each other. Be able to work in the same field. As you can see, the dots are back. That is all per vehicle. So guys, that is the video. I want to thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below of this technique of one, recording a custom course to define a larger field area than what is defined in the game. We didn't plow up any fields. We didn't merge any fields. We just kind of defined a larger working area here on this grass field. And then we basically used that larger area, that larger defined course, to uh, basically, what are you doing? Basically map out the rest of the courses that we did here on this particular field. Where are you going, buddy? It is clearly a sign that course play is very early in its development. Well, you shouldn't be doing that. So that, guys, I'm going to say, until next time, Happy farming.